Om Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्याजेत्घ्नोपशा गुरब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णुर्गुर्देव महेश्वर गुरसाक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओ श्रीगुरव श्री सत्य साईनाथ श्रीपादुका पूजया नम ओम श्री परम गुरव श्री शिर्डि साईनाथ श्रीपादुका पूजया नम ओं श्री परमेष्टिगुरव श्री दत्तात्रेय स्वामी श्रीपादुका पूजया नम सद्गुचरणारविंदाभ्या नम ओं नमश्चंडिकाज खड्गंचक्रगदेशु चाप परिघाछूल भुषुंडी शिर शंख संधदती कृणयना सर्वांगभूषावृता नीलाश्मद्युतिमाशका सेवे महाकामस्तौत्सपिते हरौ कमलजो हंत मधुकटभम अक्षस्रक्परशुंगदेशुकुलिश पद्मुष्कुंडिका शंखंचक्रद दंड शक्तिम सिंच चर्म जलज घंटा सुराभाजनम शूल पाश सुदर्शन चधती हस्त प्रवाल प्रभा सेवे शैरिभमर्दिनीह महालक्ष्मी सरोजस्थिता घंटाशूलहला शंख मुसले चक्रंधनुस्साजक हस्ताबर्दती घनालसच्छीता सुतुल्य प्रभा गौरीदेह सुद्भवान्जगता आधारभूता मह पूर्वामत्र सरस्वती मनुभजे शुंभादिदैत्यादिनी ब्रह्मोवाच स्वाहा स्वधा वषटकार स्वरात्मक सुधाक्षरे निमात्रात्मका स्थिता अर्धमात्रा स्थिता नि याच्चार्या विशेषत संध्या सात्री वंदे विजननी परय तद्धार्यते विश्व तत्सृज्यते जगत तय तत्ल्यते देवी मत्स्यंते चर्वदा विसृष्ट सृष्टि स्थिति च पालने तथा समृति रूपालते जगतोस्य जगन्मये महाविद्या महाबाजा महामेधा महास्मृति महामोहा च भवती महादेवी महेश्वरी प्रकृतिस्वच गुणत्रय विभाविनी कालरा महारात्रिर्मोहरात्रिश्च दारुण ओ शाति 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 गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग हरिओम शालोम साईराम नमस्ते थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग we are studying the first chapter of <clears throat> devi mahatyam and uh, this portion that we are studying is when brahma is invoking the mother who is now in complete association with uh, mahavishnu 
and she is referred to in this context as yoga maya or she is the mahamaya as always happens with bhagwan this last thursday is the ekadashi on which bhagwan has woken up <laughs> it is the kartika ekadashi and to wake him up this body has to had to chant for 6 hours <laughs> and uh, doing this uh, samputita sri rudrabhishekam invoking the varuna mantra and uh, also the dakshina murti mantra and also the manyu mantra and having this beautiful darshan of mahavishnu who is manifested because mahamaya has to be relieved from him so this last thursday ekadashi is called deva uthana ekadashi it's one of the most powerful ekadashis when Mahavishnu, like we said, Kalpante Bhagavan Prabhu, and he goes into this, he goes into this complete Yoga Nidra, and this Yoga Nidra, he starts on the Ekadashi that starts before Guru Purnima, Vyasa Purnima, I should say, and that Vyasa Purnima is during the month of July, August, during the Guru Purnima, and then after this four months, he is now Deva Uttana Ekadashi. Right at the time when we are studying Brahma, invoking the presence of Bhagavan Vishnu in the awakened state, and that is what is the stotram that we are studying as Brahm as Brahma is now, not directly waking him up, but he is praying to that with which he is in complete unison with. Yoga is unison. Last time we paused at this place where we said Prakriti hi tvam cha sarvasya guna traya vibhavini kalaratri maharatri moharatri hi daruna. This reference to these different ratris, we already studied those during the Ratri Suktam chant. If you haven't heard those, I seriously urge you and sincerely urge that you go back and see every video that is related to Ratri Suktam and in fact to all the Purvanga. And uh, this Brahma's invocation of the Mahamaya this is referred to as also Ratri Suktam, but it is called Tantrika Ratri Suktam. Prakriti Hitvam, you are the fundamental objectified nature. That is Prakriti. Prakriti. Kriti is to be made. Kriti is what is made. Pra Kriti means emergence of those that which is now comprised of three things in its objectification. And I will keep repeating these themes until you we completely get 100% aligned with those. So Kriti means is what that which is made. So how do you make anything? You make things with a material. And when you make thing with the material, what does it contain? It has three aspects to it. What are those three aspects to it? Hmm? What are the three aspects to any object? Name, form, and form, function. Name, name, function. Yes, form, name, and function. And that is what is called Prakriti. Prakriti hi tvam cha sarvasya. All the names, all the forms, all the functions is she only. She is all those things. And therefore, what are we therefore saying? 
That is the reason why we say Rupan Dehi, Jayan Dehi, Yesho Dehi. The Dehi, the indweller is her. Now repetition of that. Prakriti hi Tvam cha Sarvasya. Everything here and now, whatever is present. And that presence as the name, form and uh, the aspect about the function. <coughs> if you look at what this functionality is. This functionality is driven by the three gunas, guna, traya, vibhavini. Is the essence of the entire material jagat is described in that. And all of that is you. You are not only just that. Kalaratri, Maharatri, Moharatrihi, Ta, Cha, Daruna. What it is, is not only that, you are the one that is present through Kala, Maha, Moha. And therefore, and that Ratri again is not the night. And when it comes to dissolution aspect of it, mercilessly dissolved. Everything is mercilessly dissolved. Because she doesn't have any attachment to that name, form and functionality. It's how do we relate to that? What does that mean mercilessly? Means she, this thing called as uh, um, unattachment, you know, no attachment to that. Because why there should be any attachment to anything that is object for the mother? Because when everything is dissolved, it is she only. Hello, you understand? Just like the blacksmith, when you go and give them some old necklace of your great-grandmother, which is now out of model, and you don't want to wear it anyway, and you want to make it into a new model, you take it to the blacksmith, and they say, convert it into the most modern form. The blacksmith has absolutely no attachment to that necklace, neither you, because it's great-grandmother, she is not alive, and she is not going to worry about it. So you also don't care. So you go and say, convert this into something else. And then what does the blacksmith do? He doesn't look at what the beauty of the necklace is. Oh, what a beautiful necklace, all of that stuff. He has no attachment to that name and form or whatsoever. He cares about only one thing, how much gold is present in that necklace. So he will mercilessly dissolve that necklace and make something out of it. What has not changed? The gold. What has changed? The name, form and similarly the mother also, Daruna. Because she has not changed. This is all the science that we study. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. There is only one energy. It's neither created nor destroyed. It's transformed and during that transformation process, mercilessly God will transform you. If you are the ornament surrendered at his feet and say, I am simply an ornament, I am outdated, outmodeled, transform me, that blacksmith, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, mercilessly will transform you. And during that process, he will put you through the furnace, incredible temperatures, beat you up, and you have to become malleable and ductile, and you have to be put in the furnace. And through that entire transformation process, the outcome will be a beautiful, lustrous instrument that is adorned at his lotus feet. Prakriti hi tvam cha sarvasya guna traya vibhavini kalaratri mahar kalaratri hi maharatri hi moharatri hi cha daruna. Now, it's not only that, you are the fundamental code. I think I mentioned this before in another session. In genetics, there are only four letters at the end of the day. And those four letters is the entire constitution of the entire universe. 
everything and anything that has anything called DNA, diribonucleic acid, has to be made up of only four ATGC. And those are nucleotides that comprise. And everything is a combination of those ATGCs. Similarly, the entire universe is comprised of these seed letters that is the spiritual code of the whole universe. Everything redacted into the seed in its fundamental form which is indestructible because DNA can persist for eternity so that people can actually take it and analyze it and figure out what this species came from, how long it lived, how long ago it lived, etc, etc. The whole universe is fundamentally seed letters. Om, Eem are the two from which came all the rest of them, all the rest of them, including the entire universe is Aim, Hrim, Shrim, Kleem, Vada Vada, Vagvadini, Aim, Sauk, Ham, Saha, Aam, Hrim, Kurom, Kleem, Shrim, Hum, Swa. So in the next mantra, this manifestation of these seed letters expressed into what we can relate to in the context of Tvam Shreem, Tvam Ishwari, Tvam Hreem. These are, there is no Bijaksharas in this, but it is indicating about the seed letters more than the Bijam because it doesn't say Tvam Shreem, Tvam Shri, Tvam Ishwari. Can you cl scroll down, ma? Tvam Shri, Tvam Shri, Tvam Shri Hi. Please scroll down. Tvam Shri Hi, Tvam Ishwari, Tvam Hri, Tvam Buddhi Hi, Bodha Lakshana. Can you scroll down the screen, Tali, please? I scroll down, Uncle. It's not reflecting for some reason. Hmm. Give, give it a... <clears throat> is that, true? To drop is that true for everyone Sorry. or just me? It's true for all of us. <clears throat> Tvam Shri Tvam Tvam Shri Shri Hi Tvam Ishwari Tvam Hri Hi Tvam Buddhi Hi Bodha Lakshana Lajja Pushti Hi Tatha Tushti Hi Tvam Shanti Hi Shanti Revacha Tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Okay, let's stop at Tvam Ishwari because maybe it will flow better. Tvam, tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Shri Stvam Ishwari Tvam Hri Stvam Tvam Bodhalakshana. Bodh. Pavani, your uh, sound is not correct, Ma. It's not coming through for me, at least. I don't know. Others, there's a problem with microphone. 
Um, Your voice is getting distorted a little bit. Is that true for everyone? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are chanting this uh, mantra, there is a nuance uh, here. It is the meter here doesn't exactly fall like the rest of the shlokas. So I will chant the full shloka so that you get the idea about it and then we will discuss that later. The important aspect about the second line is you will see that we will, okay, let's chant. Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Stvam Buddhir. Okay. Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Stvam Buddhir Bodhalakshana. Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Stvam Buddhir Bodhalakshana. I'll chant one more time. Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Stvam Buddhir Bodhalakshana Lajja Pushtistatha Tushtistvam Shantihi Kshanti Revacham So, you notice that after Shantihi, I took a pause. And there is a should be a comma there too. I'm not sure if that is showing up as a, a comma. Oh, is there, they didn't put a comma. Okay. Usually, when you see the text, they will put a comma after the visarga, which is the he that is followed by the letter, the akshara, cha. And you should not combine those two and chant. I know who is a good chanter or not of Rudram just by listening to them where they split that, where those come, where those shakaras comes in uh, Rudram. Mahadhyaha kshullake bhyaschavo namo adhaha kshamachara If they don't split that, that means they haven't, not, they haven't learned Rudram properly. So, in this mantra also, shantihi kshantirevacha. So, well, let's learn this first line and second line. Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Tvam Shri Stvamishwari Tvam Hri Tvam Buddhir Bodha Lakshana Tvam Buddhir Bodha Lakshana uh, there's a problem with the microphone, Ma. I can't hear you. So, Chandrasekhar, let, 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 give me two seconds. Uh, you are frozen also. Looks like your internet is not good today. Okay. Okay. Tvam Shri. Tvam Ishwari. Tvam Hri, Tvam Buddhihi, Bodha Lakshana. This is a beautiful. So these are not. Uh, be, what's the difference between the Bijakshras and these? Is these uh, if it is followed by the Anuswara, Um, Shreem, Hrim, Im, Om, then those are the Bijakshras. There they they have to be chanted completely full and they cannot be combined with any other letter like for example if you say om markandeya uvacha like that when you stand you can't say om markandeya uva om markand om or then people say om namah shiva it's you cannot chant om namah shiva it has to be om namah shivaya gam ganapataye namaha you cannot combine the bijakshara bijakshara with the following letters so for that reason if it is shreem you have to check tvam shreem tvam ishwari tvam hreem tvam buddhi bodhalakshana so then what happens the meter is completely gone so that's the reason why it is not used as it's used as shreehi hreehi and not shreem hreem okay that's the nuance about that Okay, Chandrasekhar, 
who wants to chat maybe chandrasekhar yeah, your net, sure, network sure. is not good okay tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri tvam <coughs> tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri tvam buddhir bodh lakshana tvam buddhir bodh lakshana tvam buddhir bodh lakshana lajja pushte statha tushti lajja pushte statha tushti lajja pushte statha tushti tvam shanti hi shanti revacham tvam shanti hi shanti revacha tvam shanti hi shanti revacha tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri stvam buddhir bodha lakshana lajja pushte statha tushti शांति की शांति रे वच श्री स्वामीश्वरी ह्री स्वुद्धिर्बोधलक्षण लज्जा पुष्टि तथा तुष्टि शांति शांति रे वच श्री स्वामीश्वरी ह्री स्वुद्धिर्बोधलक्षण बोध न बोध बोधलक्षण लज्जा पुष्टि तथा तुष्टि शांति शांति रे वच श्री स्वामीश्वरी ह्री स्वुद्धिर्बोधलक्षण लज्जा पुष्टि तथा तुष्टि शांति शांति रे वच नौ दिस श्री ह्री श्री इज प्रिफर्ड टू as equivalent to everything associated with the sustenance aspect shri ma shri is referred to auspiciousness wellness health wealth safety peace all the meanings associated with the shiva are embedded in shri interesting observation shri in english is referred to as sri and sir is sir <laughs> so shri is used also in the context of respectfulness to that which sustains everything hri is associated with that which is associated with manifestation expression ishwari is that which is the substratum that doesn't change in the context of manifestation or sustenance so when we are looking at this mantra now you hopefully got how to chant the shloka because you cannot chant stop at hri you know tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri stvam buddhir bodha lakshana hri stvam buddhir you have to take a pause after the hri stvam so that you don't separate the hri and tvam and then this lajja now let's look at what is this manifestation about the manifestation about the lakshana lakshana means the characteristics that are associated with all these three ishwari shri hri is buddhi bodha 
ಲಜ್ಜ ಪುಷ್ಟಿ ತುಷ್ಟಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಕ್ಷಾಂತಿ ಓ ಮೈ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೌ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಎಂಬೆಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೌ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಈಶ್ವರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಹ್ರಿ ದೋಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಡಸ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬೋಧ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬೋಧ ದಟ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ನೌ ಅವೇರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಪಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ distinguishing the not simply about the intelligence that we think about intelligent fellow not that intelligence that intelligence which is arisen awakened that intelligence is very different from this intelligence that we are talking about this intelligence will take you from buddhi to buddha buddhi bodha together buddha enlightened intellect what's the difference between enlightened intellect and a, and a non enlightened intellect huh? buddhi buddha what is the difference buddhi buddha what is the difference i and you buddhi buddha i and a i and a that is the difference yes you are all well trained by this time because you heard this so many times buddhi buddha difference is i and a there is also two other words buddhu buddha <laughs> buddhu buddhu buddha buddhi buddha i feel so bad for buddha because everybody calls him buddha 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 means old fellow buddha means enlightened one how much a mahaprana makes a difference so this buddhi that intellect that is only so selfishly associated with the ego is the unawakened intellect that intellect that is associated with the ego the i that is not is referred to here this is awakened intellect therefore awakened intellect a for awakening therefore buddha is awakened enlightened simply buddhi is not <coughs> lajja pushti tatha tushti tvam tushtihi tvam shantihi shantihi evacha what a beautiful expression lajja lajja is interpreted as shyness no 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 lajja is not shyness shyness in a way is also another manifestation of the hidden form of ego misplaced ego feels shy <coughs> this is not shyness lajja is resolve modesty and resolve to fight for dharma that is what is lajja and in order to be modest in order to be modest modesty comes when you are completely content and satisfied just think about it modest people are those that are happy with whatever they have and but in the context of their modesty they are not shy modesty is not shyness you understand you look at mahatma gandhi for example he was not shy he was modest but out of that modesty that self contentment and that self contentment is called pushti in the context of nourishment from a physical aspect of it tushti is mental contentment pushti is physical contentment so when you have all of those things what is the result of that shanti peace and then when you have peace what do you get forbearance shanti shama shanti so now what you are seeing in this mantra hmm, yes humility modesty is also 
another way of calling that word lajja lajja it is not lajja okay there is there is no za in sanskritam it is lajja lajja pushti tatha tushti tvam shantihi shanti revacha all these manifestation of fundamentally the lakshana lakshana means characteristics when you see these characteristics in someone know that it is the expression the full expression of the mother as the shri and the hri shri hri tvam shri stvameshwari tvam hri stvam buddhir bodha lakshana lajja pushtes tatha tushtes tvam shanti hi shanti revacha next lokam this next shlokam is now immediately you see what is referred to is khadgini the one who holds the sword shulini the one who holds uh, carries the trident ghora most fightful fierce one gadini one who is wearing the one who is handling the mace chakrini the one who is holding the discus tatha no what sir suddenly you turn the mother into violence khadgini shankini one who is wearing the conch chapini the one who is wearing the bow bana the one who has the arrows bhushundi bhushundi i know bhushundi what is a what is bhushundi oh that those are the um that's the the slings you know they have the slings bhushundi parigha man i some of these violent weapons i don't know huh? <clears throat> how to translate them into english i know the i know what they are because you see the mother carrying them parigha ayudha so khadga shula gada chakra shankha chapa bana bhushundi parigha nine weapons are described in this in this mantra and with all these nine weapons carrying these weapons she gets the name ghora <laughs> ah uh, ghora means the the one who ghora means the one from a misinterpretation point of view non spiritual point of view the one who creates fear but actually the ghora is the one who removes the fear ah <laughs> uh, you look at the mother's kali thing form for some people it causes fear for some people it removes fear what's the difference between the two why the same thing causes fear in some people and the same thing removes fear in some people why because that is nothing to do with your fear for a higher mind it removes fear for a lower mind it creates fear this is i i don't know i mean when i'm saying these things you may be simply look at it it may just pass over your head what it doesn't even make sense and it won't make sense because the same problem the same problem if you give to two individuals one with a lower mind another with a higher mind same problem the one with the lower mind will get the challenged inti- intimidated intimidated and they will go into depression 
the same problem when you give it to a person with a prepared higher mind they will take it as a challenge and they will do everything to accomplish it yes yes hello yes do you see this in in our life situation not just see in life situation even within family the same thing happens even among twins this will happen so that means uh, that mind uh, which is the positive mind higher mind means positive mind lower mind means negative mind some people will look at something and say oh man this rudram thing you know it is so tough it is so intimidating look at all these guys chanting this devi mahatyam is so intimidating it is so tough i can't sit through all these practices and all of that stuff therefore i give up but same situation another person who is with a positive mind look at it and say man this is so beautiful i have to do everything to learn it and i will take it as a challenge and i will make it happen the make it happen is shankara the one who runs away from it is kinkara because then why should then they will come up with stupid reasoning also why sir why i should learn devi mahatyam god is present everywhere god is love god is everything i don't need to chant these mantras and therefore you know i am god myself why should i chant this this is all what is called misplaced intellectualism that is drowning the person to do something but then you tell the person hey dude you are not doing for yourself da if there is a sick person and you have to cure that person will you say no 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 don't worry about your sickness you take care of your you are the god yourself no you give the medicine first therefore bhagavan ramakrishna said annamo ramachandra ani vilapinchu arthulaku matabodhalendulaku why do you need to preach them anything when they need food to eat first give them the food make them content get a positive mind then that positive mind which we has pushti which has tushti will take everything and the same object that appears to be fearful removes fear from the person with a positive mind khad gini shulini ghora khad gini shulini ghora khad gini shulini ghora gadini chakrini tatha gadini chakrini tatha gadini chakrini tatha shankhini chapini bana shankhini chapini bana shankhini chapini bana bhushundi parighayudha bhushundi parighayudha bhushundi parighayudha khadgini shulini ghora gadini chakrini tatha shankhini chapini bana bhushundi parighayudha khadgini shulini ghora gadini chakrini tatha shankhini chapini bana भुषुंडी परिघायुधा खड्गिनी शूलिनी घोरा गदिनी चक्रिनी तथा शंखिनी चापिनी बाण भुषुंडी परिघायुधा देयर इज अ नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन अबाउट दिस मीनिंग अबाउट द मीनिंग अबाउट द श्लोकास life situations create in us severe stress and when those things happen the mind will be pulled into lower energies at that time you have to remember that god has given you these faculties that 
are so important to pick up yourself and stand up and not get drowned into misery and this aspect about the ghora aspect of it is it's not that you are now become a fearful terrible person or etc all these are powerful instruments that god has given khadga represents the focused intellect shula represents that which takes you beyond the time space and objectivity association associated with drowning in the past three representing the trident representing that which is beyond the past present and future and that faculty is within you and that gada the mace gada gadd gadd means what is spoken your word is a powerful instrument chakra that which is associated with action ability to do things chakra very efficient movement chakra shankha ability to perceive sound chapa which is your mind bana your thoughts bhushundi parigha all these are beautiful faculties that you are enabled with they are the one that take you from fear to fearlessness now you tell me go and tell the people that all the gods carrying weapons are dreadful and that we worship dreadful gods tell those people we know that the divinity controls these instruments holding them in the hands but you guys are used by those instruments swami's thought for the day today was so powerful i was reading this and for all the religions that preach that you are sinners it's a wake up call o oh, e children of immortality listen listen to the answer given in the message of the sages rishis who had the vision of the most majestic of persons purushottama who dwells beyond the realms of delusion and darkness o oh, ye human beings brothers the only means for you to liberate yourselves from the succession of deaths is knowing him do not imagine that you are sinners for you are heirs of eternal bliss ananda you are images of god sharers in undiminishable bliss you are by nature holy ever full you are indeed god moving on the earth is there a sin greater than calling such as you sinners you are dishonoring and defaming yourselves when you acknowledge the appellation sinners arise cast off the feeling that you are sheep don't be deluded into that idea you are the atma you are the drops of the divine nectar of immortality which no neither beginning nor end all things material are your bond slaves you are not their bond slaves what a, just go read this thought for the day november 5th posted in prashantini lem so whenever fear comes near know that that fear is not going to touch you because you have all these powerful weapons take them into your hands and fight against everything that is inflicting you the thought that you are a slave so ghora is that but she is also aghora this is the question that chandrashekar asked do i fight or not fight <laughs> Oh, 
is very beautiful. This next one is Saumya. Saumya Tara. Asesha Saumya Bhya. This, this is so blissful. Saumya. Saumya Tara. Asesha Saumya Bhya. Ati Sundari. Para. Paranam, Parama, Tvameva, Parameshwari. Hello, these shlokas are not about some god sitting on a navel of another guy sleeping and chanting, you know. These shlokas are about ourselves, who we truly are. And that is Bhagavan's message. Who are you, Saumya, gentle? Saumya Tara, beyond gentle. Asesha Saumya Bhyaha, for those innumerable ones that are already so loving and gentle amongst those, you are the most beautiful one, Ati Sundari. Para, Apara, Nam, Parama. You are beyond this and that infinity Tvam Eva Parameshwari. You are the ultimate being. Now what's the previous one? Ghora. What is this one? Aghora. You are both Ghora. You are Aghora. You are Bhadrakali. You are Mahakali. You are Lalita Parameshwari. You are also Kali. You are Chinnamasta. You are holding a human head with your hand. You are wearing a, a skirt made of human hands. You have this dreadful tongue that is rolling out of your mouth. Vistara Ativadana. This with fearful face that appears to be so dark and blood shot eyes. But you are so gentle. You look so beautiful. You hold a sugar cane. You hold a pasha. You hold a ankusha. You are this beautiful form of the most beautiful. Ghora Aghora. Aghore bhyo, ghore bhyo, ghora ghora tare bhya, sarve bhya, sarva sharve bhyo, namaste, astrudra rupe bhya. Ghora aghora. What is this, sir? How can the same thing be fearful and looking dreadful, fearful, and the other thing looking so gentle, so loving? Yeah. There is no paradox there. Hello. There is no paradox or whatsoever associated with those two things. <coughs> Why there is no paradox? Just go back to your childhood and look at your mother. When you are throwing all those pranks and not listening, doing something, she is ghora. When you are in distress and all of that stuff, you need food, you need love, she'll cuddle, she'll hug you. She is the most beautiful of the beautiful at that time. That fearful one you from which you try to run away from and the same loving one that you go and cuddle into the lap. That's the same love. That's the same love that becomes tough. That the same love that is softer then the most soft. Same love. But we associate this love only as one aspect of the emotion, which is always trying to be nice. <laughs> Very nice. You didn't do your homework. Come, Kanna, I will feed you. Will the mother ever say that? Huh? You did all that mischief in the school. What a nice mischief, boy. Come on. I'll cuddle you. Are even when Bhagwan comes as a human, 
and he is throwing all these pranks the mother is trying to hold his face and say show me your mouth did you eat the mud or not <laughs> that's a different story na huh? so and the same krishna so beautiful so saumya so innocently opens the mouth the same krishna around whom the entire universe is tied gets bound by this rope that the mother tries to him why because he is bound by love and even the tough love he didn't say at that point oh mother yashoda what do you think who i am i am bhagwan krishna come on look at my vishwarupam and i am going to show you my vishwarupam no he didn't do that saumya bhya ati sundari ashesha saumya bhya ati sundari the most beautiful gentle aspect of krishna and that krishna who never even held any weapon to fight against the army of the kauravas when he was seeing this fearful bhishma who was coming at arjuna unstoppable picks up the wheel of the chariot and looking at that form of krishna bhishma immediately looks at that beautiful form oh god you have now held this wheel to protect your devotee and that is your mission and to protect that devotion and to protect your devotee you have even broken your promise that you will not hold a weapon yes saumya saumya tara saumya saumya tara ashesha saumye bhya ati sundari para paranam parama tvam eva parameshwari saumya saumya tara ashesha saumya saumya tara ashesha saumya saumya tara ashesha saumye bhyastvati sundari 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 saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari para paranam parama para paranam parama para paranam parama tvameva parameshwari tvameva parameshwari tvameva parameshwari saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari para paranam parama tvameva parameshwari saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari para paranam parama tvame va parameshwari saumya saumya tara shesha saumye bhyastvati sundari para paranam parama tvame va parameshwari yet okay one more minute left so we, before we go into this next shloka tomorrow we'll take up the next shloka 
as we are studying this most powerful hymns apparently they seem to be about some divinity that is present elsewhere but if you actually carefully look at them they actually describe the divinity that you are already embodied with and therefore these becomes what are called awakenings because that slumber mind had made you forgot who you truly are and what your capabilities are and don't let your life situations ever make you forget who truly who you truly are and that is what is the true awakening <laughs> in the context of awake arise awake stop not until the goal is reached uttishthata jagrata prapravara nibodhata never ever give the feeling that you are a sinner and you are fit for nothing and that you are a slave that you have to live like a slave but at the same time don't try to dominate overrule and control and do all those kind of things because because now because it is said like that now go fight against every now not like that hold the weapon when it is needed otherwise who you are the most beautiful the most beautiful but yet the most fearful and how those to get expressed your natural state is the latter one saumya saumya tara shesha saumya bhya stvati sundari para paranam parama tvameva parameshwari that's what who you actually are but then you are adorned with all these things that are dreadful weapons such as your word a dreadful weapon hmm? and then how would you use that word how would you use that thought how would you use that action are they under your control are you holding them or are you held by them those shlokas if you go through this how it starts with fundamentally that you are this substratum manifestation of this omkara and how that manifestation of that totality in presence is now manifested manifold and how we relate to that this is the awakening praise of brahma yadakshara pada bhrashtam matra hinantu yad bhavet tat sarvan kshamyatan deva narayana namostute विसर्ग बिंदु मात्राणि पद पाद क्षराणि च न्यूना निचाति रिक्तानि क्षमस्वसायीश्वर अन्यथा शरणं नास्ति त्वमेव शरणं मम तस्मात् कारुण्य भावेन रक्ष रक्षसायीश्वर हरि हे ओम तत् सत् श्री साईश्वरार्पणमस्तु Let's check if there are any questions or no questions today. I'm blissed out. Okay, what is the higher mind? What is the lower mind? I think we already um, answered that question. And yes, tomorrow, I think you know we have this beautiful instrument called iPhone. which naturally tells you when the you don't have to remember time change anymore huh? if you have your uh, cell phone olden days we used to get up in the morning and my god you know get depressed that the time has moved forward time has moved back but time has not changed it's the stupid human mind that is changing but anyway in the iphone the time automatically <laughs> changes so please set your alarm to your regular wake up call arise awake arise awake <laughs> at the right time <clears throat> so thanks uh, gauri for reminding about that 
and um, the um, <clears throat> my my apologies for this uh, voice today <clears throat> and tomorrow we'll uh, hopefully complete the brahmahuvacha and then i also sent out a note about uh, originally we were scheduled to do in uh, tomorrow the parayanam but we moved it to close to bhagwan's birthday 20th of november <clears throat> so we'll do the parayanam on 20th of november and bhagwan's uh, bhagwan's uh, tithi birthday according to the lunar calendar happens to be on november 12th okay which is the next saturday and after the class next saturday we will do ekadas rudra abhishekam to omkareshwara and sai ishwara if you are able to join the chanting it will be live streamed and all of us can offer our love on that beautiful chaturthi that comes after the kartika purnima and as i already mentioned every monday this month has been extremely powerful monday the last monday was the shravana nakshatra koti somavara ashtami and saptami kasp very powerful uh, kartika somavara next this coming uh, the day after tomorrow is kartika purnima and of course for those of you who are in uh, with the lunar eclipse things you should not chant the mantras that are related to doing puja and all of that but for those who received the diksha of the chandi mantra and the ganapati mantra if you actually do the mantra japa at that time it's very very powerful so think about that no pressure only pleasure it's my duty to tell whether you follow it or not is bhagwan's will about your own body mind and spirit and the last piece is um, yes that is uh, that's what i wanted to say and since there are uh we have center program for the whole day oh, of the 20th okay sir as long as you're doing something that is uh, related to god you're okay <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point okay sairam okay thank you no any questions from the floor otherwise we'll close स्वस्ते प्रजाभ्य पिपालयताेण मगेण महीं महिषा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु नि समस्तोका सुखिनो समस्तोका सुखिनो समस्तोका सुखिनो ओ शांति 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 जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई ब